And the thing is that when we think about blockchains and bitcoins, maybe some of us think of it in terms of computer nodes, but at the end of the day, there are humans behind operating all these uh, well, computer nodes, right? And mm -hmm. when there are humans, we like to optimize our outcomes. And when there are incentives, we like to optimize our incentives. So I guess from my perspective, this is where game theory comes into play. How do we strategize to optimize our incentives? And this is where a lot of the game theory and Bitcoin uh, discussions are, are centered around. Yes, I think you are hitting the nail on right on the spot. Uh, game theory is basically as a kind of a set of mathematical models to describe how people behave, uh, how do they make decisions while they interact with each other. Uh, just add one thing on game theory, since you talk about the selfish mining. I mean, selfish mining, when it first came out, I think was maybe 2014, if I got it right, was definitely a very shocking result to the community. And I think the root cause for why it was a shocking result is that it kind of reflects uh, some of the challenges in applying game theory to real life. The reality is always very complicated. And a big game theory is a mathematical model to describe how people can behave. Right? You have to specify what is people's action space. Like, for example, like with the model poker, right? We have to say, well, what is the rule of the game? What are the set of actions you can play, right? You can play a king or play a ace, right? But there's always limitations because the real life is not like a very well specified game like a poker. And you can always play actions that are outside of uh, what people have defined, right? For example, like uh, we don't think about, okay, when I play poker and I just want to win, right? One, one way for me is just like I, I kill every, all, all my opponents, right? This is another way to win, but typically we do not think about that. You can either choose to move fast and break things, right? Just push out new codes. Right? Or you can be very cautious, right? You can go rounds and rounds of code audits. But of course, like if you do that, right, certainly there's direct cost to auditing codes. And second, there's also just there's opportunity cost, right? Because like you delay the uh, the rollout of your new code. And this is also actually can be modeled by game theory, right? This is in kind of an incentive problem, right? So what is the potential loss to a technical glitch? And uh, what is the cost? of mitigating them, right? And you need to find the optimal trade-off. So uh, I think for this particular angle, we can still apply game theory uh, to it. Right, yes. If we look at the um, the attacks in the past, it would seem like um, the threat actors have modeled this uh, in some ways and decided that exploiting technical bugs would yield a bigger success. Yes, yeah, so uh, thank you, Professor Lee, for your time today. Um, I think we are, uh, like you say, we are just really scratching the surface and it's a huge, complicated topic. But I hope yeah. that well, what you have presented would start our audience to think about how blockchains uh, could be vulnerable to game theory applications. Cool, thanks, thanks for having me.